I feel depressed, like loads of people, I say I feel down, right? And as I was learning about the causes of depression and anxiety for my book Lost Connections, I started to realise I don't think that's a metaphor. There's this amazing um, professor at Stanford called Robert Sapolsky, who in his early 20s went to live with a troop of baboons in Kenya. And it was his job to figure out when are baboons most stressed out. So his job was to hit them with little tranquilizer darts and then take a blood test and measure something called cortisol, which is a hormone that baboons and us release when we're stressed. And baboons live in this hierarchy. So the females don't, interestingly, but the men live in a very strict hierarchy. So if there's 30 men, number one knows he's above number two, number two knows he's above number three, number 12 knows he's above number 13. And that really determines a lot. It determines who you get to have sex with. It determines what you get to eat. It determines whether you get to sit in the shade or you're pushed out into the heat. You know, it's a really, really significant where you are in the, in the hierarchy. And what Professor Sapolsky found is baboons are most stressed in two situations. One is when their status is insecure. So if you're the top guy and someone's circling, which comes for you, uh, you will be massively stressed. And the other situation is when you feel you're at the bottom of a hierarchy. You're, 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 you know, you've been kind of humiliated. And what, what Professor Sapolsky found, which I think is re noticed and then it was later developed by other scientists, is when you feel you've been pushed to the bottom, what you do is you show something called a submission gesture. So you, you baboons will raise, uh, I, I say you, I assume no baboons are watching this, maybe they are. Um, you, 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 a baboon will put its body down physically, it will put its head down, it will put its bottom in the air, and it will cover its head. So it clearly seems to be communicating, just leave me alone, you've beaten me, okay, you've beaten me. And what lots of scientists have subsequently developed, people like Professor Paul Gilbert in Britain and Professor Kate Pickett and Professor Richard Wilkinson, also in Britain, have really developed is this idea that actually what human depression is in part, not entirely, but in part, is a form of a submission gesture. It's a way of saying, I can't cope with this anymore, right? Particularly people who feel they've been pushed to the bottom of hierarchies or who feel, remember the other stressful situations when you feel your status is insecure. It's a way of just going, okay, okay, I retreat. I don't want this fight anymore. You've beaten me. It's, it's a kind of very strong evolutionary impulse where you feel you're under attack to just submit in the hope that the stress and anxiety will then go away, uh, that the sources of the stress and anxiety will then go away. And one thing that's so important, Kate, Wilkinson, uh, sorry, Kate Pickett and Richard Wilkinson really developed this, is they've shown, so as inequality grows, um, depression and anxiety grow. They've shown this as a very robust effect, right? This helps us to explain it. If you live in Norway, your status is relatively secure, right? No one's that high, no one's that low. Um, movement between where you are is not so extreme. If you live in the United States, especially today, which is we're now at the greatest levels of inequality since the 1920s, there's a few people at the very top there's a kind of precarious middle and there's a huge and swelling bottom, right? So you've got, you can see why in the United States you've got more people who'd be showing a submission gesture, who'd be like, oh Jesus, I'm, I've been beaten, than there would be in Norway. This is why inequality is one of the drivers of um, depression and anxiety and why dealing with inequality reduces inequality and anxiety. It's one of the things that really shocked me actually was looking at in the United States, the group with the lowest depression by far is the Amish. So I went and spent time with an Amish community. The Amish live in these homogenous groups which are incredibly equal. The richest Amish is as worth as much as the poorest Amish, right? They're not showing sub submission gestures in the same way because no, they don't fit. There's a lot wrong with the Amish, don't get me wrong. But I'm not suggesting mass conversion to the Amish. I'm a gay man, believe me, I'm not. But, but we, we can learn from the fact that in these highly equal and homogenous groups, you don't have that, that extreme status stress. Now, I don't want to go as far as the Amish do, but we, moving closer to it would be one of the factors that would reduce depression and anxiety.